today, I just wanted to start out with uh, speaking about some powerful and strong men that I have known in my life. Two of them in particular, the third one of course is from the Bible. Two people I have known that are extremely powerful power lifters, which I met through my many years of living. One is by the name of Jack London. Anybody hear of Jack London? Powerlifter Jack London. Jack London I met years ago. He was a major powerlifter. He uh, was the fifth man in the world to squat 1,000 pounds. Really strong man. Genetically, he was what I always called a, a freak, a genetic freak, because he just had muscles upon muscles. After powerlifting, he wanted to uh, become Mr. Universe, which he went from about 330 pounds down to a 29-inch waist, and he, he won and became a Mr. Universe. Powerful guy. Second guy is Jerry Shockey. I don't think anybody's heard of Jerry Shockey, but he's been in the church basically his whole life. Jerry weighed about a third of what Jack London weighed, 130 pounds. But Jerry competed in powerlifting for years. He actually got me into powerlifting. And Jerry had 128, 130 pounds, never lost a powerlifting meet. Competed in the locals, in states, national, United States, and he competed in the worlds, and he never lost. His numbers weren't that great, even me being a non-powerlifter, semi-powerlifter, his numbers weren't what I could do, but Jerry was very strong for being at about 130 pounds. So, let's go to the Bible. Did you know that when Moses and Joshua died, there was a leadership problem in Israel? And this period became known as the time of the judges. It was a dark time in Israel's history, and the children of Israel repeatedly did evil in the sight of the Lord. These words appear at least six times in the book of Judges, and the book of Judges has a cyclical pattern. It begins with apostasy, meaning the children of Israel abandoning their God. That was followed by hardship, brought on by God as a form of punishment, followed by crying out to the Lord, and then God placing a judge over them to rescue them. This is a common theme again and again as we read through the book of Judges. The time of Judges lasted for roughly 350 years until the establishment of the monarchy of Saul, David, and Solomon. And during this time of period of Judges, the Philistines, who I think we just heard a few weeks ago, were a constant thorn in the side of Israel. Egypt was no longer a power. The Assyrians and Babylonians were not yet in the picture. In total, there were more than a dozen judges in Israel, about 13 men and one woman named De Deborah. A few of the judges like Jephthah, Samgar, and Samson fought, fought the Philistines. So did Eli and Samuel. King Saul and his son Jonathan died at the hands of the Philistines. Of course, we all know about David and Goliath. Lest we forget, Goliath was also a Philistine. I almost slipped and said Philippine, but I, I, didn't, I didn't slip. So. And today I would like you to take a look at a judge, one judge in particular, and his name is Samson. We're going to look at his life and go over the lessons we can learn from it. The story of Samson contained four short chapters in the book of Judges, starting in Judges 13 through Judges 16. So if you would, please turn to... Judges 13. In Judges 13 and verse 1, and the Israelites again did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord delivered the children of Israel into the hands of the Philistines for 40 years. So we know exactly which part of this cyclical pattern the children of Israel were in when Samson came into the picture. Judges 13 and verse 5. For lo shall, excuse me, for lo, 
thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come on his head. For the child shall be a Nazarite unto God from the womb. And he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. Clearly, we know by now the real purpose why Samson was called by God. We know the very reason why he was chosen and that he was to deliver Israel from the oppression of the Philistines. For the sake of shortness of time, I will not go over the entire life of Samson, but give you a few of the highlights as well as the lowlights in the life of Samson. So here are some lessons we can learn from the life of Samson. We, us in the church, are called to live a holy life. Samson was the original superhero. There was no, this is, was no way before any Marvel comic book superhero came to be. He was the strongest man in the Bible by a long shot. And I'm gonna interject here. Jacob must have been pretty strong too because he wrestled with uh, a pretty powerful <laughs> person. Um, uh, and he might be the strongest man that ever lived. Samson's birth was short of a uh, cinematic uh, affair. Samson was miraculously conceived after the angel of the Lord appeared to his barren mother. His parents were given specific instructions on how they should raise the child and that he will be a Nazarite to God from the womb. This is the angel talking to Samson's mother in Judges 13, and I can't read my writing here, but it looks like 13.7. You shall not drink any wine nor strong drink, neither eat any unclean thing, for the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb to the day of his death. No razor shall come upon his head. He shall not drink wine or eat or touch anything that's unclean. God had specific instructions how Samson would be brought up. The demands of sanctity imposed on both Samson and his mother reaffirmed that God had incredible plans for Samson's future. The instruction is obviously clear. Samson would be consecrated and become a Nazarite from birth. Nazarite means to be separated, or a similar meaning for this word can mean holy or sanctified. Men and women during the times of judges on occasions would take Nazarite vows, but they're usually done for a short period of time. Samson's vow was for his entire life. If you take apart the life of Samson, he was not a, a really a, a good role model. The life of Samson is an episode of stubbornness and disobedience all at once. He broke his vow. He ate honey from the carcass of a lion. He was not supposed to eat or touch anything that is unclean. He hosted week-long parties and never did say that he drank wine or anything else, but it would be hard to avoid alcohol when it's your own wedding's party for seven days. Like Samson, we are called to live a holy life. God created us, called us for a higher purpose. The Apostle Paul clearly states in 2 Corinthians 2, excuse me, 2 Corinthians 6, verse 16. 2 Corinthians 6, in verse 17, it says, Come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean, and I will receive you. Verse 18, I will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters. God expects us to live a holy life. Our lives should be wholly dedicated to God in his way of life. In Romans chapter 12 and verse 1, Romans 12 and verse 1, it says, We must offer our lives as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your, our reasonable service. In verse 2, And do not be conformed to this world, but transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you, we, may prove that it is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. 
So we are called to live a holy life. It is God who gives us strength. It is God who gives us strength. Samson may have been the strongest man in the Bible. As strong as he was, his strength didn't come exactly, didn't come exactly by working out at the gym, doing CrossFit, pushing rocks, or swinging a jawbone, or whatever exercise he did during that time. Samson's strength came from God. You and I have been given an immense strength in God's <clears throat> and God's Holy Spirit. Though we may not be as strong as Samson physically, each of us have our unique strengths and talents that we can use for the glory of God. It doesn't matter what age or group or financial status or whatever made up status man has created, we all have a gift from God that is useful for God's work. Never think that we are nothing. We contribute to the preaching of the gospel of the kingdom. It is not just about sending in and paying tithes, but it's also through our service, our support network, and building each other up. We're all important in God's eyes. In the end, we do need God's strength to fulfill our calling. Philippines, nope. <laughs> Philippians, that's always a tough one for me. My wife's from the Philippines and I see P-H-I, Philippines, no, Philipp Philippians. Uh, chapter 4 and 13. Four, uh, ch chapter 4 and verse 13. I can do all things through, Christ's, through Christ who strengthens me. We have the freedom to choose, but we are not free from the consequences of our choices. God has given us the freedom to choose life. God has set in motion an immutable spiritual law. If we break it, bad consequences will follow. Although God forgives, some choices that we make can be life-altering. In the case of Samson, losing his hair, his strength, and his eyes were a devastating blow. He never did recover from it until the last few minutes of his life, when we asked God to give him strength one more time so he could fulfill his purpose and his calling. And if you watch the movie, I forget what year it was, 1949, and then it was rated G. It was with Victor Mature and Hedy Lamar. It was called Samson and Delilah. You can see what happens at the end of the movie of what Samson had to do or did. Um, he had so much promise, but he had very little to show for it at the end. I often think, what if Samson had avoided Delilah? Would his life have been any different? Samson made some boneheaded decisions in his life. He was a very flawed character. He had incredible strength, but he also had incredible weaknesses. Samson's condemnable, commendable traits are, he accepted his role, he had trusting faith, he was willing to work with God, but Samson also had moral flaws. He had lust for women. Samson's sins were the weakness of the flesh. He did not live up to his vow training or dedication at all. The Old Testament record <laughs> contains straightforward accounts of Samson's sins with no attempt to conceal them. There was no attempt to downplay his weaknesses or to exalt his noble traits. Samson's weaknesses mirrored the religious and moral climate of Israel as a whole during the time of the judges. Despite of all of his weaknesses, he did return to God before he died. And God used Samson to fulfill his purpose. Samson's death did much to impede the oppressive actions of the Philistines. The greatest lesson we can learn from all of this is that God forgives. There are other lessons we can learn from Samson as well, especially young people in terms of relationships. Samson did not listen to wise counsel. <laughs> I see one's listening, <laughs> especially from his parents. He lacked self-discipline. He was a poor judge of character. He didn't know that looks are deceiving and that he ignored obvious red flags. 
Samson was strong, but he was also weak in many areas. His strength ended up being his demise at the very end because he relied on himself too much. His relationships were a mess. He ruined his life and he suffered greatly because of it. If we were to encapsulate Samson's life, it would be by these words. He was blinded by his own strength. Samson was the strongest man ever to live, but it was God who gave him that strength. More importantly, Samson let himself be used by God. Only at the very end, when he was fi finally learned to trust and obey, did he redeem himself. And in conclusion, just like Samson, we are called to live that holy life. We are to be separate from the world. It is God who gives us that strength, and the real strength comes only from God. Although we are free to choose, we are not free from the consequences of our actions. Samson's life and reputation might have been tarnished at the end, but in the final analysis, God saw Samson as a man of faith. This is evidenced by the fact that he is listed in the Hall of Faith in Hebrews. Hebrews 11, verse 32. When we read through the list of names recorded there, no, no one on that list was perfect. So how about you and me, brethren? Are we living a holy life? Are we asking God for strength? Are we asking God to help us make good choices in our lives? <laughs>